Hey everyone, I just wanted to showcase a new tool that I've recently finished to work with this asset here, Sinti's Polygon Modular Fantasy Hero Characters. If you're not familiar with this asset, it is a modular character tool where it's got a lot of individual parts in order to build your own character with. The problem with the asset is that it doesn't have an editor to actually make the custom characters you want. It has a randomizer script that'll randomly make a character for you and you can go in there and manually turn on and off parts to do it for you but it's not very user friendly it's very tedious to get a custom character so i went about making a tool to make that easier i had made a tool before in the past but the problem with that tool is it was very particular to the project i was working on it wasn't designed to work with anybody else's project you had to do a lot of setup to begin with so when it came to make another tool for this asset, I decided to try to make it work right out of the box. You don't need to set up the asset. You don't need to do anything special. You just drop the scripts or the package inside the project and then it works. And I've succeeded and I'm very happy with what I've got. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that. If I minimize this, uh, what you'll see is a completely blank project. The only thing in there is the assets, the fantasy hero characters. I've got nothing else added. I haven't made any changes. All I've done is added that package. And then I'm going to go ahead and drop in my custom editor package that I created. It's just a few scripts here, as you can see. I'll go ahead and import them. Once I do that, You'll see the new folder and the scripts, including an editor folder added. The editor folder is because they are editor windows that I've created to make your characters. I wanted to be able to make these characters in the editor and not in game, uh, just to make it easier for production. So to start, um, all you'd have to do, everything's loaded, everything's ready to go. You get these two new pop-ups, you get a setup wizard. And then you also get an editor uh, window. As you see, both of these are empty. They don't populate until you've highlighted an object. So if I highlight this object, for example, it'll recognize that I've highlighted a game object and then it'll want to set it up. And to do that though, you wanna use Sinti's. It won't work with anything but the modular characters from that asset pack. So you take the pack, you go in here, you select models, and you can use the base model here if you want to. We'll go ahead and just dock that. Uh, you can use this one if you want. I've got it set to where it will automatically apply the material to every part. So you can use this one if you want to, or you can go and use the already pre-colored one. It'll work with both. It'll work with any of them. All you have to do is select the character that you want to do it with. So we'll do this one. We'll add the component. And that's this one here. It's a script that'll stay on the component in order to modify all the parts for you. Then it, the setup wizard will change. Is it a new or existing character? New means brand new. So in this case, it's a brand new character. We haven't preset this character up at all. It's just brand new. It's got all the parts active already. So that's what this is. Existing means that you had already set up a character and you want all the parts to stay as they are. So we don't want to use that here because we don't want all the parts to show right now. So we'll do new character. Uh, you can choose male or female. It doesn't matter too much with the new one. It, it's just because you'll be able to change it once you get to the editor part. Uh, when you're using an existing character is when that matters because it'll mess with which parts go to which list. You know, females parts. If you have a female body, you want those parts to be recognized as female parts and not male parts. So in this case, I'll just go ahead and select female. Uh, with this it'll say use existing material or create new one so if you use an existing one any changes you make to the color will change everything that's using that material Create duplicate will take a material that you choose so we'll use their base material and then you can name it we'll just call this demo and it'll save to the folder you see there and what it'll do is it'll create a unique material for this object and that way I can change all the colors and not worry about affecting all the other objects that are using the standard material. We'll hit continue. It'll tell us what we have. We have a new character. It's going to be a female when it creates and the material it's going to use is a demo. You can just commit and it'll make the changes or you can commit and show the editor window to modify it. Since that's what we want to do, we'll go ahead and click that. You'll see this is that window I had open before and it's got all the options to modify the character. 
right here we have all the parts listed and they have sliders to adjust every single one as you can already see they're already colored um all the parts were had the material added to it it's that demo one that got added and put into this folder demo one right there and then you can just go through and toggle all of them they all get changed a new character you want to switch it to a male it'll switch it just like that no problem you want to change the colors they're all here i also attached all the colors to unity's undo system that's a big thing i know when i like to color things i like to be able to undo colors so uh that they're all attached so you can control z on those and they'll go back to what they were before so that's one part of this asset this editor tool that i've got set up and what i've also got set up is to work with existing objects as you saw so let's say you have already gone through and customized your own character or like Cinti has they have a ton of presets they have like 120 presets here let's say you want to use one maybe modify a particular piece or you just want to use the script that i have inside of your game because the script will also allow you to do things like add and remove parts like uh, from an equipment from an inventory maybe you want to use a script and you want to attach it to your pre-existing character that'll all work as an example i'll just grab a random one here move it out of the way so we can see them so this is a pre-existing character that Cinti made all we have to do here um, we have the setup wizard still docked we just add the component then we say existing character it's already existing we'll say male because it is the male form and then it'll say create duplicate or use existing material. So if we want, we'll just use uh, an existing one, which is I think the one that's already on there, which is the fantasy hero. That means any changes to that material will affect all of the presets. We'll continue, uh, we'll commit and then show the editor so it automatically loads it here. And then we have it fully hooked up to the system so we can change all of its parts. And it's hooked up to the new editor that I created and it works with, uh, I don't know why I still have him on there. He would just, yeah. And so you can have a new characters and then existing characters and they just plug and play right into this system. Uh, I think it's really great. There's one other thing, you know, the main part about it is maybe you don't want presets, right? You want, you want all of these to be armor sets. Right now it's not designed to be simple like this is to do an equipment system. Um, I've got it set to where you can equip items using the methods that allow you to activate parts but that's as far as i go if you want to make items in the future i'm thinking about making an editor for that where it'll you know pop up a window it'll show you the item and then so you have like the part and then the id of that part because that's like the big thing with attaching items is you need to know which part it is like if i wanted to attach this character's shoulders as an item i would need to go in here and know that Oops, or this character, I guess, is the one I'm messing with. Where is it? Oh, I somehow selected the wrong one. Whoops. Anyways, uh, so uh, if I wanted to make an item that attached this shoulder, for example, I need to know that that number is six, so a tool would make it easier. So you can just create the item and attach the part to it. But uh, as an example of showing how that would work and how easy it would be to set up, let's say we created something that did that. So let's say we created uh, uh, an equipment manager or something. And this item would be attached to your character. Uh, it's like an inventory or whatever. And we'll just attach it. Um, the script, what it would need is an item and then it would handle attaching the item to the character. So in order to do that, we'll need uh, just a few things. It, it should be really simple. Um, the first thing we need is like an item class, right? So our item class for the item, uh, it would need two things in order to work with the system. It would need a part, like what part of the body is it? I've got an enum set up to recognize every single part. That enum, woo. Uh, we'll just go ahead and make it public to make it simple. Uh, it's just this enum right here, and then we can even do something like make it an array, so it can be it can affect multiple parts. So it's two. If you're doing spalders, for example, it would equip two shoulder parts, not just one. And so we can just do body parts, and then you just need the ID of 
what uh, the part ID is. So like that number was seven or 17 or whatever it was for that one. And that's all your item needs. And then we'll go ahead and serialize this just so we can customize it in the editor. So I don't have to create a new class here in code. It'll just save me a step. And then we'll go ahead and we'll need a reference to the modular script. So that's uh, modular character manager. And we'll just call that character manager here. And then we'll need uh, the item. We need to create a new one and we'll call that small birds that we were talking about. And then so um, on start, we'll get a reference to the character manager. Be on this character, and then um, all you have to do is just add it. So you, um, using the character manager, so we'll do that with, when we press a button. Do space key down, decode space, and then you just go into the character manager. Actually, we're gonna do because it's an array of parts. We'll do for each part in. Baldur's dot body parts. Then we'll go into the character manager here and then activate part is the method that you call. And it takes two things. It takes the body part, so we just punch that in, and then it takes the ID. So we just do the spalders dot ID part ID. And then there you go. It'll go ahead and I'll show you that working now. If we just go into here and we added it to this one, we uh I forget to do something I did. I forgot to serialize this real quick. Just so it shows up in the editor so we can add the item. There we go. So uh, we're gonna do two parts. We want both of these to be shoulders. So shoulder left, shoulder right. We want it to be part ID seven, I think. And then all we have to do is hit, just get close to this guy, look at him. And when we hit start the game, hit space, and there you go, it equips. And as you notice, it automatically removes the previous item that was in that slot because the component is designed to, when it adds an item, it removes whatever's there originally. So you can see how this could be a, an equipment inventory system. Your inventory would handle all of the item logic of uh, adding or removing the item to, let's say, an equipment slot. And then once that item is added to the equipment slot, all you have to do is just call that activate part and it'll go ahead and put the part on visual display for you and remove the old one. And then let's say you, in your equipment, you wanted to remove a particular item. Uh, it supports that too. There's a method to remove a part without adding anything or to make it automatically remove that. It, uh, we'll just create another function. We'll, uh, a key code. We'll use R for remove. And then all we have to do is go into the character manager and then remove, uh, the activate part was the name of that. Oops, I didn't know my own thing. And then you just choose which part you want to remove. So um, if you're using, uh, you could do just like we did before, where's for each part in Spalder's body parts. And then you can just do character manager. Yeah, I'm really failing here. <laughs> Deactivate part. And then you just put in the part. And then so now, we go in here, hit play. So if I hit space, you'll see it does, it goes ahead and equips them. If I hit R, it removes them. Space, it adds them, R removes. And that's the system for you. So I have a tool that lets you customize it and then it's got the, the framework to start an inventory system, which I do intend to build for a project on the side. And yeah, I just wanted to showcase this. I hope you guys think it's cool. Um, I'm hoping to maybe at some point release it to the Unity Asset Store. And uh, thank you for your time.